It's Tuesday afternoon in Portland. The Lyft driver just got here. Let's go. So I'm at the airport and I'm headed to the 2017 Adobe Max conference. Uh, I've never been before and actually I've never been to any conference like this uh, and I'm super excited. So the Adobe Max conference is put on by the software juggernaut Adobe and it's for designers and illustrators and videographers and photographers. Pretty much anyone who uses their software. This year the conference is in Las Vegas. The Adobe Max Conference is a three-day event and there's a lot going on. There are keynote speeches in front of a huge audience. There is also um, sneak peeks as to what Adobe software is coming up in the next year. And then the part that I'm really excited about is the smaller workshops and talks given by people from a multitude of backgrounds. Even Aaron Draplin gets a talk. Okay, so it's Wednesday and it's lunchtime right now and I just got back from the two-hour Adobe product keynote and they talked about a lot of things. Uh, the first was that they showed a lot of new features in a lot of the programs I already use like Photoshop and Illustrator, uh, Premiere. Uh, they have an all-new Lightroom uh, developed completely from scratch and uh, it's much more intuitive and it uses connectivity from the, the cloud um, so that you can use it on desktop and switch to your iPhone or your tablet or web. Actually, uh, the cloud and the connectivity was a, a big thread today that they talked about. And I have a better understanding of maybe how and why you'd want to use cloud-based libraries within the Adobe system for sharing between the different programs and also sharing with your coworkers. Um, the second thing that they did was they introduced a lot of uh, new programs that I'd never even heard about. Um, ones that had to do with experiential design and um, social sharing, like creating all the content um, that you would need if you're making a Facebook post, Instagram post, whatever. And there was a really cool one that had to do with uh, 3D modeling, where you could take what you're working on in Illustrator and Photoshop, let's say, and you can apply that to a 3D model of like a, a food packaging. And you could adjust the lighting and, and kind of make a 3D space and boom, make the product look somewhat real for client presentations. But at the heart of it all was Adobe showing their dedication um, to developing and improving the apps that we use on a daily basis. Um, they're listening and watching uh, how we work and they're finding ways to make that work easier or better or more intuitive. You know, um, as we shifted uh, in the past from, from print-based to web, from desktop to mobile, from 2D design to 3D design, things are always changing. And they revealed some of their in the works, behind the scenes process um, of how they're going to integrate AI and machine learning to actively affect uh, and make it easier on how we work in the future. So, you know, in the past, if I selected things and tried to move them, I'd get some kind of strange behavior going on. I've got a lot of overlapping complex vectors. Uh, Puppet Warp, Warp makes this really simple. If I select this illustration and I select my Puppet Warp tool, I can add a pin to the shoulder one to the elbow, and one to the hand. And that means certain parts of the illustration will move and certain parts won't. So yeah. I can move the hand independently. I can move the hand and the elbow independently. It makes working an illustrator 
It makes working in Illustrator so much simpler with complex illustrations. Let's find a lemur with a different posture. And with stock, I can actually use that image to search, which is great. So what's happening now is stock is using Adobe Sensei technology to analyze that image, figure out it's a lemur, and return back a bunch of lemurs. But I'm really excited about these two new features that the team has added. The first is the depth of field and the vivid color. And both of these also use Adobe Sensei. So you'll see here now, if I turn up the depth of field, we're going to get a lot of lemurs that are sharp in the foreground and blurry backgrounds, which is awesome. Of course, because this is an Adobe tool, all of these are super easy and integrated with our tools to use. So you can license this one, one click or save a watermark preview, and it'll just show up in our library. Yeah, I like this image, but I want her to look to the right. That's the moment in time where you, where you really lose it and you realize, I have to go through these 10,000 photos again to do that. I select left and right, and as soon as I click on this, it zooms in on the image, and I can just move the slider to move through everything just with the orientation of left and right on this particular image. Um, let me quickly pick this one. And you see it automatically zooms out again and gives me the full picture. And I can just double click this and add this to my canvas. And now this is not where the content intelligence stops. The content intelligence actually goes a lot further into the asset. And Sensei can distinguish between the foreground and the background. And as you guys all know, masking this hair in the background would be, would be a real piece of work, to say it nicely. So I'll just quickly click, click on this, and Sensei automatically masks this for me, and I can move this in place. So that's just a quick recap of a two hour long presentation. I'm probably not doing it justice, uh, but it was really inspirational and it was really fun. You know, you watch these keynotes online, whether it's Adobe or Apple, and I was sitting 15 rows from the people speaking, and it was kind of cool to see how it all worked. Uh, so right now, I'm off to a couple small sessions. So Stephen Gates talked about building your personal brand and how when you go to a job interview, they always ask you, tell me about yourself. And very few people know how to talk about their strengths and their unique characteristics and ultimately why they're better for the job than someone else. And so it's up to you to uh, do the research and find, invest, and ultimately promote your value. When is the one time that we all spend time on it? The week before a job interview. <laughs> because then all of a sudden, oh my god, I need a logo, I need a portfolio, I haven't touched this thing in six years, what am I gonna do? Ah! And then we wonder why the job interview doesn't go well. I interview so many people and try to get them to tell me why are they different. Not what applications they know, not where have they worked, not what clients have they done. What do you bring to my team that is different from everybody else? Because the problem is, is to build a personal brand is incredibly hard. Because all of us, and we'll talk about this again later, you all are your own biggest blind spot. Start by crafting a brand vision. And the best way that I can try to tell you to do this is to take a step back and try to look at yourself like your own product, like if you were your own client. So Pete Souza just shared his photos uh, from when he was the White House photographer for President Obama, uh, which ended up being an eight-year project. Um, he wanted to show what it was really like behind the scenes at the White House and as they traveled, and not only to show uh, Barack Obama as a president, but also as a man. And, I, and I'm thinking to myself, I can't believe I'm able to capture this kind of a moment with a politician on the first day that I met him. So I sort of like right away knew uh, that this guy was like a good subject as a, as, you know, as a, a photographer. I also tried to uh, oftentimes show you his point of view, you know, get behind him to show you what, what things look like from his perspective. So this was the, the night that, it was a Sunday night, and he had uh, uh, decided that the federal government was gonna take over uh, GM and Chrysler, and he was about to call the CEOs of those companies. And the thing, I, the thing that, that shows you I'm doing a good job, I think, is that uh, nobody's looking at me, right? There's nobody looking at the camera, they're all looking at him. 
So Kelly Anderson just gave a talk about uh, lo-fi magic and paper creations and how she makes uh, design touchable and visceral and inspiring and educational. I'm not anti-digital. Like I use um, digital software in all of my projects and I don't spend most of my time in a computer. But I mean, it's really fun to get the people world engaged because you can really know what's going to happen. And you know, the idea is that by like, scooping out all the electronics and interface, like kind of masks that sense of like technology is black box um, and hopefully it gets people interested in the idea of building things like no matter what tools they have you know if you just kind of paper and move around like you could potentially like remake this book an illustrator who goes by the name Robzilla uh, took us through his process of digital illustrating. Uh, he no longer uses physical materials. He switched to digital uh, using Adobe Draw and Adobe Illustrator Sketch on the iPad Pro. He showed us his tips and tricks of how to move seamlessly from the iPad back to a Mac Pro and how it transfers vector layers and color palettes and things like that. So it was cool to see how a digital process can become second nature and maybe the new norm. Tad Carpenter owns a design and illustration agency in Kansas City. He shared some examples of his company's work and some of his personal projects. But one thing that I thought was cool was the way that his team shot this stop motion time lapse uh, of a mural for the Kansas City Royals. Adobe Pavilion, which is kind of like a bunch of trade show booths here at Adobe Max. But there are different companies like technology companies and paper companies, drone companies, camera, software, everything. People are going around, trying out demos, looking at new features. Some people are trying to win some prizes. One of the most highly anticipated parts of the Adobe Max conference is what they call sneaks. It's like a two hour presentation where their engineers take you behind the scenes of all the stuff they've been working on that might or might not find its way into the Adobe products in the future. Um, a lot of it relied upon their new AI and machine learning algorithm guru that they call Sensei. And it's some cloud-based a program that can analyze in real time um, based upon hundreds, thousands, millions of actions that they've done and it pulls information from the Adobe stock photos and illustrations and 3D models and some pretty cool stuff uh, they showed us. Hopefully all of this is in an effort to help our jobs and not replace our jobs. Check it out. So I find this photo here and my client loves it, except she doesn't like the road in it. She really wanted it to be all natural, um, and so she asked if I can remove that. Then you run content to our fill, and you will get a result that looks like this. The thing about content to our fill is that um, you may notice that this patch right in here looks a lot like that patch right there, which looks just like that patch there, which looks like this patch over here. And the reason that happens is because content to our fill, what it's doing is it's looking through this image and trying to find other content in other places of the image to put in the hole. So do we have another solution? Well, today we're inter um, introducing Project Scene Stitch. So I click there to get it started. It takes a few seconds. 
But what this is going to do, instead of searching this image for content, it's going to use our Sensei machine learning methods to go search other images for content. Um, and namely, it's going to be searching um, Adobe Stock. And so just like that, we can go in and we can get a result that looks like this, for example. And so it pulled, th it pulled this, this content from another image. Um, but we don't only get one result. We can get many results like this. This is a portrait of writer Charles Dickens in 1842. What we did was to train a neural network on tens of thousands of photos. And by seeing these examples, it's able to recognize facial features and fill in plausible colors. You might be wondering, what if you work for a magazine uh, or have black and white photos of your great grandparents? Can we colorize them as well? Yeah, we could. <laughs> so, what do I do? Adobe Sensei made him alive. <laughs> this is his character design. Before painstakingly finish all the details, he uses our tool to iterate his design ideas with clients. He's, I have an ivory texture. I'm going to do a crop and then put it on top and change to another texture that I like and do a little crop and put a few swatches just to give the neural network some hints about what I really want it to look like. And there you go. The texture is propagated to the entire sketch. So I exported these elements from Illustrator into my physics pack application and started by scattering them in the shape. And now I'm going to be doing a physics simulation to make these elements try to grow and shift and mesh. And all of their edges are going to try to fit together as closely as they can. Yeah, this kind of annoys me a little bit because I spent so much time doing this very same thing, vectors bending things pre-puppet warp in Illustrator. And yeah, I like the demo, but I wish I had it like two months ago because it took me forever to make when I needed to. Thanks, Paul. So when it finishes here, um, it, it's going to now, it's going to find a few empty spaces in it. This time, it, we're going to fill them with some leaves. And so you can really see it uh, forming the shape of everything that it uh, put together here, all using the power of a physics simulation. And this is the motivation for Cloak, right? We want to make the easiest possible way to remove something from video using existing workflows. Now I'm going to go into After Effects and use the polygon mask tool. And you can see that I've just tracked that through the scene, right? And you'll see I've removed this spotlight. In this example, I'm removing the strap from the guy's backpack. And this is kind of a subtle result, but I hope you're impressed because it's really hard. We never see behind the strap. So we have to imagine what it looks like behind the strap and then you know, convincingly propagate that through time even as the guy moves and the lighting changes. Um, yeah, so this is, a, this is a hard one to do. Wow. And could you still use that on the people? Could you? Yeah, we can, we can remove the people, yep. See? Where did they go? The problem is, of course, the difficult and time-consuming task of modeling in 3D. So what if we could just start from a simple sketch? So the system here uses deep learning powered by Adobe Sensei to recognize a sketch. And then it finds the corresponding model in Adobe Stock. And then it displays it to you. <laughs> what? What? It's a tree. It's a palm tree. Mm, no. One palm. The book. Uh, exactly. Nailed it. What's this? I'm sorry, my drawing makes it really Sandwich. hard for you to guess. Mm. Boat. There we go. Let's go. Ah. So let's try some moderate stylization first and see how it works. And I think it does. So you can see that the style is nicely transferred while 
the result still maintains my identity. So let's see how far we can actually push this. And how about this nice colored pencil? Will it work with my face? Yeah, I think it does. So let's push it even farther. And with the Halloween just around the corner, let's see what we can get. Wow. Well, maybe, maybe this is a little bit extreme. So let's see what else can we get. But let's not stay in the drawing realm only. We can actually go to physical world, too. Yeah. And <laughs> <laughs> so, so here we have this nice wooden mask. But as, but as you can see, the eyes on the result look much, much like the real eyes, not like the eyes on the mask. But we have implemented this new technology. We call it a checkbox, which, <laughs> which somehow solves exactly this problem. So now the illusion. So now the illusion is almost perfect. So let's try some other physical material, like for example, this statue, which in fact is a, quite a hard case. So let's see what we can get. And keep in mind that this is all computed in real time. Wow. So sick. Let's switch to character animator. Ah. And you can see that it's actually picking what I say. And I, I'm driving this puppet, although the sound is, the ambient sound here is a little bit distracting. And this only took me a couple of minutes to create these scenes with Puppetron. So here I am as a guy from a classical painting, so I can enjoy my outfit from whatever <laughs> century that is. <laughs> or I can, I can turn myself into another engraved illustration. And now I can finally play with all my toys. It was the last day of the conference, the third day, and I was thinking about why I came here and what I was trying to get out of this, and I thought I'd share that with you. Um, and you know, I've never been to a conference like this, and I've I've never filmed, uh, a, you know, documenting an event before either. My goal for this conference was to get some education and get see other people's experiences, and and mostly you know personal growth and really a resource for motivation. You know, I go to these talks and and listen and and see what other people have been doing, learn from their successes, uh, try to absorb that a little bit and, and bring it back to Nemo. It's cool to see when I go to these talks that have to do with uh, company culture or, or hiring personnel and, and making work fun and joyful. Uh, we're doing a lot of those things at our agency and, and so that's cool to see. I hope just even a little bit of the knowledge and passion that I felt and seen uh, over the last three days um, has kind of poked through this lens a little bit. Thank you Nemo, thank you Vegas, thank you Adobe. Hopefully you had fun watching this.